And you know, these are controversial topics. I think the, the faculty here has always been really accessible. I mean, we got a lot of stuff going on later today where you get to ask questions in the discussion groups and, uh, and in, the, um, in the lab. So feel free to, to pull any of us aside, or certainly Drs. Donegan and, uh, and Harding. So let's move on to the, uh, the, the foot cases. So uh, this is a 30-year-old female, uh, equestrian, no fracture on CT scan. So uh, the question is going to be, uh, and, and I, I guess what I'm going to argue is that uh, there's really no fracture here. So purely ligamentous list franc injury. Uh, and we have uh, Drs. O'Connor and uh, Quadu. And uh, we're going to have Dr. O'Connor come up and tell us why you should do ORAF. I'm not nearly as good a salesman as either of these, so I'm going to let the literature do the talking. Um, so. <laughs> uh, so I'm supposed to convince you to fix loose frank injuries. And I think we need to remember there's a wide variety. You know, there are subtle loose frank injuries that show up in my office on a regular basis, and then there's really high-velocity tra traumatic things. And I think that there's definitely the worse it is, the more likely even I'm, even though I'm supposed to be convincing you to fix these and, and to head towards fusion. So probably... The best literature we have, though some people don't love this article, sort of tells us that at two year and two and four year follow up, people that had primary um, arthrodesis did better than people that had ORAF, less hardware removal. People that had ORAF went on to fusions. But this is one study. Another study two years later from another foot and ankle group in um, Michigan, they found that there was no statistical difference in Liz Frank injuries. No, now, they don't comment in any of these really the severity of the injuries we're talking about. So we don't know whether we're talking about the subtle Liz Frank versus a high velocity traumatic Liz Frank. But with the exception of hardware removal overall, um, no real difference between the two. So looking at a meta-analysis, which only really has a solid core base of 100 patients, there was no difference between fixing and fusing between all the randomized studies we have looking at this. So, well, okay, so it doesn't really pan out the difference between two of those. Let's think about how people are functioning getting back to high-level activities. And if you look at professional soccer players and rugby players, these guys were all able to return to competition within four to six months, um, all fixed with just dorsal plating and only two fusions. So that sort of tells me that people can do really darn well with just a fixation, and there's always the option to go on to fusion if that doesn't work for you. Same thing, looking at elite dancers, fusions in the regular population. Um, across the board, people have been able to turn to high-level activities with a fixation as opposed to a fusion. So when you have a 60-year-old with diabetes who's got instability at 1 and 2, and again, this is not nearly as severe as the patient we're talking about, even in diabetic, I'm going to fuse this. I think there's a role for it because you don't want to develop a deformity. But when you have a subtle Liz Frank, as you do with a 20-year-old gymnast, that's hard to identify, I think there's no reason to fuse this this young in this man to develop adjacent segment arthritis and give him a chance to function. I think for me, the harder one, sorry, fuse, fix that. I think a harder one is someone that's a 50-year-old accountant who has instability at one and two, who's got a small little fracture there, whether you fix that or fuse that. And I think if a patient understands the risks to go on, um, that you may develop arthritis and needs a f need a fusion in the future, um, that it's okay to go ahead and do a primary, um, just a primary ORAF. So I think there's a role for open reduction internal fixation. I think if you don't have medical comorbidities, there's no risk or there are young people that are active that have a high level of function. I think anybody that has a risk for non-union, or sorry, a risk for non-union, should probably have a fixation so that they don't develop a non-union because that's a problem that's really hard to fix. Down the line, you can always fuse someone. So I think that in my uh, in my hands, for people that have no bony comminution or no involvement that way, that if you can fix them primarily, you can always fuse them down the line and give them an option for potentially better function early on. That's my thoughts. All right, great. Uh, Dr. Quadu is going to talk about fusion, um, right? Yeah, come on up. Why should we fuse them? Okay. All right, thank you for this opportunity, Dr. Rahman. Um, well, I think, uh, you know, Liz Frank injuries are certainly um, injuries that uh, uh, for some, are certainly fairly common in the athletic population, but um, in, in the North Philadelphia population that uh, certainly we're kind of routinely dealing with. 
um, we have more or less what's called a, a urban, uh, we have a urban um, uh, athletes, essentially, you know, you have individuals essentially escaping uh, law enforcement, and uh, it's not unusual for us to encounter these injuries. So I kind of want to uh, approach this in a bit of a roundabout way, and I'm going to start uh, in this fashion. So I think uh, it's not uncommon uh, that uh, for certainly uh, individuals who treat uh, uh, foot and ankle pathology, certainly in the elective uh, sense, it's not uncommon for us to address pathology like this, which is certainly your routine bunions, which uh, I'm sure a, a third of the population in here probably have to some degree, but uh, mild to moderate deformities like this, it's not certainly uncommon for us to address it with selective arthrodesis of the first tarsal metatarsal joint complex. Now, this is something that I think in the long term hasn't been demonstrated to have significant sequelae, and so I think certainly considering that we do it in an elective setting, I think uh, it, it may uh, 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 behoove us to certainly entertain this as well in the, uh, in the traumatic setting as well. In 1989, there was a publication in uh, the Foot and Ankle International Journal uh, where Tai Uzinian uh, demonstrated they essentially assessed each of the hind foot joints, the motion that was available in each of the hind foot joints as well as the tarsal metatarsal joint complex. They found that the second tarsal metatarsal joint has essentially 0 0.6 degrees of sagittal plane excursion, which is virtually negligible. The third had about 1.6, and the first had more than the central two, which was about 3.5. So again, just kind of quickly backing up and thinking that, uh, certainly ac accepting the fact that we selectively arthrodesed the first tarsal metatarsal joint, I think it's worth uh, uh, considering that the amount of motion in the second and third tarsal metatarsal joint complexes are also negligible that uh, if we consider arthrodesing that, the long-term sequelae might not be so significant anyway. Uh, this was uh, the, uh, the article that Dr. Connor uh, pointed out in the study that I kind of want to uh, uh, delve into just a little bit. There were about 41 patients in the study, exactly, rather, um, and they randomized these. This was a, a prospective uh, randomized study where they essentially, uh, the first patient was treated with arthrodesis, second RIF, and so forth. Um, and these were their findings. I think their fi findings were certainly uh, uh, worth uh, considering. And I think Dr. Connor made an interesting point. Uh, she said, I think um, arthrodesis certainly can always be performed at a later date. But certainly, um, when I consider uh, intervening uh, in patients, uh, I think uh, the, the long-term uh, disability and long-term downtime for additional surgery, especially, if, for example, when we consider list for, uh, syndesmotic injuries where there's a, a bit of a, uh, a direction towards using flexible fixation in order to avoid uh, hardware complications down the line, I think uh, it's worth considering that uh, maybe uh, the, the idea of we can always do this later might not necessarily be in the patient's interest. We may want to consider doing definitively what's in their best interest. And so here's a study, and I kind of want to delve into some of the results specifically. So uh, with respect to the ORF group, and I don't mean to coerce you with the colors here. The red, red doesn't necessarily mean bad or green doesn't necessarily mean good, but um, I think that happened accidentally. Uh, so uh, at approximately six months, they found that about 16 of the 20 uh, in the ORF group underwent, it, underwent uh, hardware removal, 15 of which lost correction. Okay? Now, in the arthrodesis group, there were about four of the 21 who underwent hardware removal around the same time. Now, again, there was no loss of correction, but essentially hardware removed uh, was under the basis of essentially point tenderness along the uh, sites in question. There was a... Uh, uh, obviously, there was degenerative uh, joint uh, degenerative joint disease uh, at a at a higher percentage uh, in the RF group as the the hardware essentially is transfixating the joints. Um, so I think uh, it's it's worth considering in the long term. What they found was that the AOI, the AOFAS scores now in, you know this is obviously not a, uh, a a standardized outcome, but certainly the AOFAS scores for the arthrodesis group around four four years. Uh, far exceeded the AOFAS group, and so I think uh, it's worth considering uh, in a, uh, a very real way to intervene with these uh, uh, via fusion versus ORF. All right, so uh, let's take our votes. This is <laughs> oh, we got ORF one, fuse two, 
I guess, you know, there's a lot of different cases you could think about, but just try to think about this case. Hopefully the information presented uh, allows you to make a decision and uh, you can have the timer. Obviously, I think there's good arguments in either, in, uh, in either case, but it's really that primarily ligamentous injury, what's best. All right, it seems like we always have the same split. Um, but it seems like there's a lot of people voting. I'm seeing like 80 or something or whatever, so there's quite a few of you voting. All right, so it seems like ORAF, 69%, FUSE, 30%. All right, so really not a lot of splitters here. I think everybody seems to, you know, we got like a fairly good majority. I think you'd win an election, right, with that? Anyway, all right, so um, let's move on to the next.